The Boeing 247 is often referred to as the first modern airliner because of its safety, comfort and reliability of commercial aviation. In 1933, on February 8, the Boeing 247 was taken into the air and the development team was headed by Chief Engineer Saint Monty Monnier with the philosophy of minimizing cost while maximizing speed. Hello aviation enthusiasts, today we are Taking a trip back to the 1930s, a time when aviation was on the verge of incredible innovation. And at the heart of it all, the Boeing 247. This plane is often considered as the first modern airliner, paving the way for aircrafts we see today. But there is a lot more to it than just a fancy title. Let's dive into the fascinating story and legacy of the Boeing 247, an aircraft that changed the game. Back in 1931, disaster struck when a TWA Fokker F-10 crashed, leading to some tough questions about aircraft safety. The crash exposed the risks of wooden airframes, prompting stricter regulations and pushing manufacturers to rethink airplanes' design. Boeing answered this call with the Boeing 247, the world's first all-metal airliner. This plane wasn't just built to fly, it was built to dominate the skies, and guys, we are going to look at that in a bit. Released in 1933, the Boeing 247 came packed with innovations never seen before. Picture this, a retractable landing gear, a twin engine design, and get this, an autopilot system, wow. And you know what, cabin air conditioning was even introduced for the first time and vibration noise was lower than other aircrafts of its time period. The Boeing 247 was built for speed, safety and comfort, powered by two Pratt & Whitney Arrow 1340 engines. This beast delivered 500 horsepower each, allowing it to cruise at speeding 180 miles per hour with 10 passengers on board. And for its time, this was cutting edge technology thanks to the development team, which was headed by Chief Engineer Saint Monty Montes with the philosophy of minimizing cost while maximizing speed. Well, guys, here is where it gets interesting. Boeing's innovation could have dominated the market, but they made a very critical decision. United Airlines was the primary operator of the Boeing 247, and because it was far superior to previous aircraft, other airliners, including TWA, were eager to purchase it to stay competitive. However, both Boeing and United Airlines were part of the United Aircraft and Transport Corporation, meaning Boeing prioritized fulfilling United's orders first. As a result, Boeing restricted sales to other airlines, including TWA, until United had received all the planes they needed. TWA, desperate to keep up, turned to Douglas Aircraft for a solution, and this was where the aviation world shifted. Douglas delivered the DC-1 prototype, which evolved into DC-2, and later the legendary DC-3. The DC-2 could fly faster, farther, and carry more passengers than the 247. Douglas was just getting started, and the DC-2, which was faster, could fly further and carry more passengers quickly overshadowed the 247, making it almost every airline's favorite. And by the end of 1934, almost every major US airline had shifted to the DC-2, leaving the Boeing 247 behind. That decision to limit the 247 sales haunted Boeing for years. In fact, Boeing didn't reclaim its place in commercial aviation until the release of the Boeing 707, and that's the case later. And you know, despite the competition, the Boeing 247 still introduced some groundbreaking features. Did you know that it was the first airliner designed to fly with just one engine? Its low wing design, which minimized drag and boosted speed, gave it an urge over high wing aircraft. And here's a fun fact the landing gear wasn't fully retractable on purpose, it was a clever safety feature in case of a belly landing. 1934, the Boeing 247 made a name for itself in the McRobertson Air Race, flying from England to Australia. Although it finished third behind a DC-2 and a Comet, it proved the 247's reliability and speed in long-distance races. Later, many 247s were converted into military C-73s during the World War II. As competition with Douglas ramps up, Boeing introduced the 247D which featured advanced NACA cowlings and variable pitch propellers. These upgrades boosted its speed from 182 miles per hour to over 200 miles per hour. However, despite this improvement, the 247 couldn't keep pace with the DC-2 and the DC-3's dominance. 
Though Boeing only built 75 of these aircraft, the 247's influence on aviation was undeniable. It introduced features that would become standard for decades. However, it wasn't until the introduction of the Boeing 707 that Boeing reclaims its dominance in the commercial aviation market. In the meantime, Douglas soared ahead with their DC models, leaving a lasting mark on aviation. Now, we all know that the DC-3 became the reigning champion in the skies, reshaping commercial aviation forever. But don't let the DC-3's dominance overshadow the innovations that came from the Boeing 247. Why it didn't take the crown in the long run? The 247 was a trailblazer in its own. It may have been outpaced by its competition, but this aircraft was packed with revolutionary features that were truly really ahead of its time. An autopilot system and one of the first airlines to just fly on a single engine. And also, don't forget that the 247D could maintain an altitude of 11,500 feet, even with just one engine operating. You know, that's actually cool for an aircraft of its time. So guys, there you have it. The Boeing 247 might not have had the commercial success of its competitor, the DC-2, but its impact on aviation is undeniable. Forget that it was the first aircraft to set the standard for modern airliners. If you learned about the Boeing 247, hit the like button and share your thoughts in the comments below. Also, let me know about the aircraft you would want to see next. And guys, remember that this channel is a community for all of us aviation lovers. Whether you're here to learn, share your knowledge, or just soak in the history of flight, this channel is your home. So let's keep the conversation going down below. See you in the next video.